Without knowing languages, people from different countries won't be able to communicate with one another efficiently. And imagine if some extraterrestrial civilization sent a message to Earth. How would we figure out their intentions? Like, do they want to get to know us better? Or is it a warning about a full-scale intrusion? It must be terribly hard to bridge the gap between us and creatures whose minds, bodies, and habitats are totally different from ours. So, to practice decoding potential extraterrestrial messages, an artist-led group created a mock message from stars. It was the most alien missive the world had ever seen. Even though it was written for humans by humans, it was as non-human as possible. The message was sent from Mars to Earth, and three observatories detected the transmission 16 minutes later. Unfortunately, so far, no one has deciphered the message, but many have been trying to do it. There are only three people in the world who know what the message means. One of them is the project's founder, Daniela De Paulis. She and two other co-authors created the message after consulting with scientists, poets, programmers, and philosophers from all over the world. The main challenge for them was to get rid of anthropocentricity to make the message as realistically alien as possible. So the team immediately ruled out any kind of language-based communication. Even though now, they refuse to confirm or deny that the message contains text. The creators were also considering using mathematics. Yes, the fundamental concepts of this science are universal, but different cultures may represent math differently. DePaulis and her team struggled to compose the message for years, experiencing massive writer's block. But eventually, in 2019, the idea was formed. Three years later, in 2022, a major breakthrough occurred when the team drew inspiration from a short story called A Sing in Space. And a month before the transmission, an astronomer joined the team, adding a mathematical touch to the message to make it more universal. Since the first announcement, the project has attracted loads of puzzle lovers. They started to exchange ideas, hoping to solve the mystery. Some of them were among the first people to extract the raw message from the ExoMars orbiter's broadcast. It was a 40 gigabyte string of numbers interwoven with the alien message. If it had been real, it would have arrived unannounced, of course. But in this case, the signal came at a precisely scheduled time. Now imagine peeling layers off an onion. That's what filtering the data segment looked like. But after a week's effort, the enthusiasts received an image of five speckled clusters against a blank background. After that, the speculation on the meaning of this picture started. Could the message be hinting at the alien's appearance? Was it Morse code? Maybe it hid some genetic secrets? One user even enlisted ChatGPT to help decipher the message. There was also a theory that the image was a star map with the location of the alien civilization. Another suggested that the dots resembling constellations could be molecules. Probably, they were part of the biosignature of the foreign world. But decryption is the process of making sense of some message for which only the intended recipient has a key. That's why this kind of code breaking is much more difficult than decoding, because you need to guess the missing key. Another tricky part is where to start. Every attempt feels like a stab in the dark. You might believe that you have started to see patterns, but you need to stop and think whether it's true or you're just projecting. The community is still trying to decode the message. At the moment, there are more than 30 ideas for how to do it. Only after that can people try to understand its full meaning. How about you? Would you like to try and take part in the process? Maybe you've got some idea? Then share them with us. The planet races through space. Its orbit is unstable, like a pool ball gliding across the table looking for a target to collide into. Only this ball is the size of Mars, and it's going 9,000 miles per hour. Boom! It crashes into another planet. This Mars-sized object was called Thea, and what it smashed into was Earth. The impact released 100 million times more energy than the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. The planetary collision threw tons of solid material from both objects out into space. But only one of the bodies survived. Thea was obliterated and then swallowed entirely by early Earth. But that debris didn't go flying endlessly into the cosmic void. No, something crucial happened. 
all those solid chunks gathered into a cloud. Gravity squished it together, pressing more and more. And in the end, our moon was born. So goes the theory. At the time of the impact, the solar system was just forming. And this rendezvous of epic proportions probably wouldn't have happened if it weren't for a newly formed Jupiter throwing Thea off its orbit and straight into Earth. Our young planet withstood the blow. Time passed. Earth evolved. Its surface will become unrecognizable over the next 4.5 billion years. It's hard for the human mind to understand this vast amount of time. So we'll squeeze it all into one day. If midnight is when Earth first formed from gas and dust that remained after the Sun's creation, the next four hours show a lifeless planet. Red hot, covered in lava, constantly bombarded by asteroids and, as you know by now, even a whole other planet. Yet life finds a way. The first cells appear. It's 4 a.m. on the clock. At 2.08 p.m., we see the first single-celled organisms form. It's not until 8.28 p.m. that sea plants appear. 20 minutes later, what's this? Jellyfish. After them, the planet flourishes with different fish, reptiles, insects. The forests grow at 10.30 p.m. Between 10.56 and 11.40, dinosaurs roam the Earth. The giant lizards ruled our planet for less than one hour. A minute before the dinosaurs' extinction at 11.39 p.m., the first mammals begin to run around the planet. At 11.58 and 43 seconds, humans appear. In the cosmic scale of things, we've only ruled this planet for 1 minute and 17 seconds. So here's the main question baffling scientists. Why didn't life on Earth ever stop? It had every chance to cease. Why didn't our planet become like Venus or Mars? They both once had an atmosphere and oceans. Today, they're lifeless deserts. Forget about complex scientific concepts and theories of the universe's structure. Our little rock and all its inhabitants are just incredibly lucky. Professor Toby Tyrell at the University of Southampton used computer programs and climate simulations to solve the puzzle of why asteroid collisions in ice ages didn't turn our little rock into a lifeless wasteland. The research team took not 10, 100, or 1,000 virtual planets similar to Earth. They used 100,000 for the experiment. And every single one of those 100,000 were simulated a hundred times. They exposed these virtual planets to different phenomena. They were bombarded by asteroids, frozen, exposed to epic eruptions of supervolcanoes that blacken the skies and block the surface from the sun's rays. Just 9%, or 8,700 of them, were successful one time in 100 simulations. Of that group, 4,500 planets remain inhabited 10 times. Only on one planet out of 100,000, life didn't stop all 100 times. If life is a lottery, Earth got extremely lucky. In 2009, the unique Kepler telescope was launched into space. Its task? Search one patch of the night sky, or 150,000 stars, for rocky Earth-like planets. Over nine years in service, it ended up surveying more than 500,000 stars. In all that time, with all those observations over nearly a decade, Kepler discovered 2,600 possible Earth-like planets. The weird thing is, most of them are a type you can't find in our own solar system. They're something between the size of Earth and Neptune. But back to the real Earth. If you go far from the city and look up at the sky, you'll see an ocean of stars. If you're lucky and it's a clear night, with an unaided eye, you could count a maximum of 2,500 points of light. Yet, there are at least 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. Some estimates put the numbers of stars in the Milky Way up to 400 billion. So where's this giant range coming from? Well, counting stars isn't exactly an easy job. Scientists obviously don't number each one individually – one, two, three, and so on. You know how long it takes to count just one billion? Over a hundred years. Now multiply that by 400. 
Instead, they look at small patches of space and use some complex scientific formulas to make educated guesses of how many stars there are in total. You can do a similar experiment yourself. Imagine a bucket filled with 10 pounds of rock, sand, soil, and other items. Your job? Understand how many rocks are in that mix. We'll count only those rocks that are visible to us from above. Get a rough estimate of their volume and weight, what percentage of the total we can see, and with some calculation, you can get a number. Is it exact? Nah. Why? Because you can't know if the rocks in the bucket are spread evenly throughout or if they're all about the same size throughout? What if the ones at the bottom, if there are any, are bigger or smaller than your sample view? They could have completely different weights and volumes. That bucket is our Milky Way galaxy, and the rocks you are counting are stars. The point? Scientists can't know for sure how many stars there really are. Maybe 100 billion, or perhaps four times that. Of those, four billion are like our sun. With our own galaxy, the most accepted estimate for planets that could potentially support life is 300 million. Though, as the tradition of scientific inexactness goes, that number could be up to 5 billion or more. Either way, lots of real estate to choose from. And that's just the Milky Way. But get this, it's just one of 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. The most recent research puts that number 10 times higher, something like trillions of galaxies in space. And we've only studied less than 10% of them. As for how many stars there are in the universe, scientists put it at 1 septillion. That's 1 followed by 24 zeros. Again, it's all estimates because we can't know for sure. So far, one thing is clear. Our Earth is the only place in the universe that we know of where there's life. And this planet has done everything it can to change that. Over the past 540 million years, more than 20 major extinction events have occurred. The last one was 66 million years ago. Yep, it was the one that took out the dinosaurs, and 75% of all life on this planet for that matter. An object 7 miles across in diameter smashed into our planet. It was going 120 times faster than the fastest car today. Over 900,000 miles all around the impact site, everything caught fire. A huge tsunami swept across the world's oceans. Billions of tons of dust and sulfur rose into the sky and blocked the sun's warm rays. A global cooling came to Earth. A little over 200 million years ago, there was a lesser-known extinction event that wiped out half of all life on the planet. Most likely volcanoes or an asteroid strike are to blame. Other theories say the movement of tectonic plates triggered another ice age. At that time, huge crocodiles ruled the Earth. They disappeared, and new animals entered the arena of history – dinosaurs. But the worst this planet has ever seen was the Permian-Triassic event about 250 million years ago. 80% of marine life, 70% of land animals and plants – all gone. Volcanoes spewed out a colossal amount of lava where modern-day Siberia is. But it affected the entire planet. Around 445 million years ago, the dominant life form on our planet was marine invertebrates. There was only one continent, Gondwana, and plants were just starting to flourish on land. But something happened that took out 75-85% to 85 of all living organisms. It could have been an ice age, rising temperatures, or a more daring theory. Some think it could have been a huge star exploding 6,000 light-years from Earth. It launched a jet-like gamma-ray burst that ripped across space and poor little Earth happened to be in its path. It burned off the ozone layer instantly. Yeah, we kind of need that thing to protect us. Case in point, no matter how much this planet, or even the universe, tries to wipe out life on Earth, which is here in the first place from unbelievable odds, life always finds a way. A powerful burst of gamma radiation lasted a mere half-second, but it released an enormous amount of energy. It was more than our sun would produce in 10 billion years. This brief flash lit up the whole sky. 
afterward, a much softer and more long-lasting glow replaced it. Astronomers examined the phenomenon with X-ray, radio, optical, and infrared waves. It turned out that people had finally seen a newborn magnetar for the first time ever. It was likely formed after two neutron stars had merged. It resulted in a kilonova, one of the brightest and largest stellar blasts. Its light finally reached our planet on May 22, 2020. Imagine a massive star, at least five times the mass of our sun, reaching the end of its life. It might be because it's run out of its nuclear fuel. If it happens, the star starts to cool off. The pressure inside drops and the gravity starts to squeeze inward. And then, more than a million times the mass of our planet collapses within 15 seconds. It happens so fast that an enormous shock wave causes the outer part of the star to blow up. It produces a blinding burst of light. This powerful blast is called a supernova. What's left behind is an incredibly dense core with a huge cloud of hot gas, called a nebula, expanding around it. If the star has been massive enough, more than 10 times the size of the sun, it's likely to turn into a black hole. If not, it turns into a neutron star. It's basically a giant nucleus, the central part of an atom. These stars are mostly made up of neutrons and are rarely larger than 20 miles across. For comparison, our sun is almost 865,000 miles across, which is 109 Earths put side by side. But don't let this relatively tiny size fool you. Any neutron star is at least one and a half times heavier than our sun and has an intense magnetic field. If you scooped just a teaspoon of this star's insides, this matter would weigh more than a billion tons. It's so dense that it makes neutron stars some of the most extreme objects people know about. The next stop is the black hole itself. When two neutron stars merge, they most often create a new, much heavier one. Within milliseconds, or even less, this star collapses into a black hole. But the astronomers who examined the flash of light recorded in March think there might be another outcome. They're almost sure they saw something never observed before, the birth of a magnetar. That's a rare form of a neutron star with an ultra-strong magnetic field. It's 1,000 trillion times stronger than our planets. This field is also so powerful, it heats the star's surface up to 18 million degrees Fahrenheit. To put it simply, magnetars are the most powerful magnets in the universe. Their magnetic fields can seriously mess with the neighborhood. Atoms, unlucky enough to get close to such a star, get stretched into pencil-thin lines. If you somehow found yourself several hundred miles away from a magnetar, it would end badly for you. The magnetic field would first disrupt your bioelectricity. It means that your nerve impulses wouldn't work anymore. Even your molecules would change under the influence of the star's field. In the end, you'd pretty much vanish. If a magnetar flew within 100,000 miles from our planet, it would wipe out all the data on every single credit card in the world.